Hello and welcome to the Shiki Science Show, where in this video we'll address the four major global problems that we currently face and how biology, in combination with engineering, will help to tackle these. So today's world population is around 7.6 billion. This is projected to increase to well over 9.5 billion by 2050. This population increase will bring with it challenges and demands. And these demands can be split into four different categories healthcare, water availability, energy supply, and food supply. Going into a bit more detail, how can we develop more effective medicines at a lower cost and make them more widely accessible? How can we make diagnostics earlier more accurate and more sensitive? Or even better, how can we prevent the arousal of different diseases in the first place? How will we be able to produce sufficient clean water? How can we generate more abundant yet clean energy and how can we improve the amount of energy that can be stored? And lastly, how can we produce more food without disrupting the world's ecological balance? Now, this list is not exhaustive, but many, if not all of these, are not novel problems. We faced them before. Back in 1798, Reverend Thomas Robert Malthus, a British economist, observed that population growth inevitably outpaced the growth in food production. His prediction was therefore that with population growth would come widespread outbreaks of famine, war and disease. And these outbreaks would be able to keep the population growth in check, but only by the deaths of many people. However, this turned out not to be the case. This was because of innovative technologies that were used to increase crop yields. This included four-field crop rotation and the use of fertilisers. They made land more productive and sent more food into the marketplace. With more food, the population could grow even more rapidly than Malthus projected and helped to also meet the workforce demands of the Industrial Revolution. This technology-driven agricultural revolution of the 19th century is what Susan Hockfield refers to as Convergence 1.0. Susan Hockfield is Professor of Neuroscience and President Emerita at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. She describes Convergence 1.0 as the convergence of physics and engineering, the fruits of which we continue to enjoy today. It stems from the agricultural revolution to the birth of the electronics industry that has created our world today both digitally and computationally enabled. Now, I recently listened into a talk given by Susan Hockfield, and I'm currently reading her latest book, The Age of Living Machines, How Biology Will Build the Next Technology Revolution. And this is because we now have a so-called parts list from the biological world. That includes the ability to understand and manipulate the genetic code. With this much better understanding, it stands a chance at being able to converge with engineering, and the results could be, and are, revolutionary. This includes virus-made batteries, protein-based water filters, nanoparticles that can help detect and cure cancer, and computer-mediated rapid crop selection. And these are just the tip of the iceberg in terms of what biology and engineering in combination could have to offer to solve these four major world problems. But there's actually a fifth problem, and that problem is actually being able to converge biology with engineering. Firstly, we kind of speak different languages, and I don't mean English and Japanese, I mean different languages in terms of how we communicate our understanding and the different approaches that we take in our research disciplines. And so to be able to converge biology and engineering, there needs to be the funding in place and the opportunities for different institutes with different specialities to be able to combine and work together. And as I already mentioned, I'm currently reading Susan's book, and so I hope to make a video summarising the key points from that book when I finish reading it. And so I guess the point of this video was just to give you a bit of background, because I think it stands alone as its own video, and emphasises, as I always like to emphasise, how awesome and cool biology is. Or well, science is cool in general, as I also tweeted earlier. Anyway, on that note, hopefully you've learned something, and as always, thanks for listening, and stay tuned for when I do finally do a book summary sometime soon.